Many thanks for staying with us here on Newsdesk to a few more stories now. And the Mental Health Leadership and Advocacy Program is calling on government to, as a matter of urgency, include mental health treatment in the National Health Insurance Scheme. According to the group, since 2012 till date, there has been insufficient funding from government for mental health services in Ghana. According to the Mental Health Act, municipal and district assemblies are expected to contribute to addressing the challenges of mental health in their respective jurisdictions, but that is currently a challenge. The Mental Health Leadership and Advocacy Program says it is expected that after the passage of the mental health law, government would commit more funds and resources for mental health care, train more mental health personnel, including psychotherapists, overhaul and decentralize the hospital-based system to make mental health more community-based, create an anti-stigma regime and advocate towards of human rights abuses of all mentally ill patients. But this is largely unfulfilled. Addressing journalists at the workshop, country facilitator Humphrey Kofi says there is now the urgent need for government to devote adequate budgetary allocation for the implementation of the provisions in the Act to help address the many challenges confronting mental health care delivery in Ghana. Is the, the necessary steps have been taken to get us a mental health law currently. So the law is in full force ever since uh, 2012. But what we need now is the regulation. The regulation is that which gives administration directive to the parent law which is the act 846 and we are thinking that once the uh, ally or the regu regulation also comes into force it will go to support the parent law but currently um, it is also important that those laws that looks very uh, archaic in terms of language are ones that we need to expand from our laws in his presentation consultant psychiatrist dr frank bannon said like many other African countries, are guilty of discriminating, marginalizing and violating the rights of people who suffer from mental disorders. He says the deficits in the treatment of mentally ill persons in the country remains a topical issue which needs a holistic approach by government and other stakeholders. It's more of a policy issue and I am surprised that it's not being covered if we're looking at equity because apparently NHI is supposed to be there to ensure some form of equity. If you're looking at the most deprived people, okay, then you're asking yourself, so how come mental health is not there? How come mental health is not there? Because these are some of the most poorest people you can find in the community. These are people who have lost all dignity. They are walking on the streets naked, and mental health doesn't cover them. Okay, But then the other side is that I think government's intention was that he will make provision for these people. So he will fund it. But we all know what happens with uh, government of Ghana budgets. Quite often, you're supposed to get, and sometimes don't get anything at all. So that has been the challenge. But if they bring us under the NHI, it makes it easier in the sense that once you've provided a service, then you know at all costs, NHI must pay. Yes, we know there have been delays in payments, but at least at all costs, they will pay. So I think, yes. It's a good thing that they bring us under the NHL. The workshop for journalists is aimed at sensitizing the media on how to handle and report on mental health in the country. President John Dramani Mahama yesterday broke ground for the construction of the Kaswa Interchange Project. Now, according to President Mahama, the project is a reflection of his government's desire to impact on the lives of the people of Ghana. The construction work on the 160 million interchange at Kaswa is expected to ease the worsening gridlock in and around that part of the central region. Kiros Carval will construct a 270 meter interchange at Kaswa, two overpasses on the main Kaswa Winneba, the 33 kilometer Kaswa Obom Amasaman Road, and 22 kilometers of road in the Gasouth municipality and Kaswa. Under the project, there will be various bridges along the main Kaswa Winneba Road to improve movement within the communities. The Kaswa Interchange Project reflects our desire as a government to impact the lives of our people positively with the projects that we execute. Just like the numerous other projects, water supply, educational infrastructure, health facilities, road network, and other projects that we are executing like the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange, the Eastern Corridor Road, 
the Gifford Road, Awoshipokwasi Road, the Kaswa Interchange is a life-changing and a life-transforming project. Touching on the cause of the project, President Mahama noted, it is unfair for the political opponents to criticize the cause from afar without due consideration of elements involved. Read of political quantity surveyors who can just stand and look at something and say, oh, it's too expensive. Then you have a problem. You can do the design of a school or a hospital and say this hospital is going to be built in Tema. And you can take that same design and say you're going to build that same hospital in Hamile. The cost of those two hospitals are not going to be the same. But when you're a political quantity surveyor and you look at Kaswa Interchange and say, oh, it's too expensive. I mean, what are you talking about? You haven't seen the scope of works. You haven't seen the bill of quantities. You haven't done a survey of building materials around here in Kaswa area, and you're able to judge that the cost is too expensive. President Kufour said something. I've never forgotten that. He said there are some people the cost of everything, but, don't know, but do, do, do not know the value of anything. They know the cost of everything, but know the value of nothing. He said an additional overpass at Galilea, near Amanfrom in Gasouth, and CP at Iwutu Senya in the central region will be constructed to further improve connections and eliminate unnecessary U-turns from motorists moving from the Galilea to Amanfrom and from CP to Opeikuma. Under the project, two terminals will be constructed the BRT terminal around the Kaswa traffic lights and one of the sheep markets on the Obom Road. The Kaswa interchange project consists of three flyovers at the main Kaswa traffic lights, another one at Galilea, and the third one at CP. The main flyover, which is at the Kaswa traffic light, will be 270 meters long with a width of 18 meters, and so it's going to be a, du a dual carriageway. Flyovers will be constructed at CP towards the west of the main flyover and at Galilea towards the east. These two flyovers will allow for north-south movements without interfering with the traffic on the main Accra Cape Coast Road. The west flyover has a span of 39.5 meters, while the east flyover has a span of 41 meters. The project will also constitute underground storm drains, modern schools, and a health facility. In addition, there's going to be a modern polyclinic to replace the existing one, I think it's somewhere here, over there. That's a Reho a Reho polyclinic. The Kaswa polyclinic, the a Reho a Reho one, is going to be replaced with a modern, new, state-of-the-art polyclinic. And the polyclinic, the polyclinic will have an emergency center so that if any accidents happen on this road, you don't have to rush to Winimba or rush to uh, uh, Kolebu. You go to the uh, Kaswa Polyclinic. There's an emergency center there, and the people will be taken care of. In addition, in addition, 10 communities in the Kaswa area are going to benefit from clean drinking water. We are going to drill boreholes in 10 communities and provide them with clean drinking water. That is not all. Some local roads in the vicinity surrounding the construction area will be upgraded as well. Speaking on behalf of the Brazilian government, the Brazilian ambassador to Ghana, Irene Vida Gala, said the project is a collaboration between Ghana and her country that will further deepen bilateral relationship. She assured the contractors will deliver on the great engineering quality they are known for. For no other reason, Queiroz Galvão has been called once again by the government of Ghana to be a partner in a major development project. 
Mr. President, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all staff of Queiroz Galvão. And I assure you and your distinguished guests that we Brazilians are proud to be partnering you in one of the very important promises of your administration. Needless to say that these developments in infrastructure in Ghana have to be seen in a political context because there is no peaceful country without economic and social development. Well, uh, away from that, let's move now to the Brown Half Food region and bring you this particular story just coming in. And we are told that uh, fire has raised down uh, several uh, structures in Sunyone Zongo, including a mosque. Now, the fire, according to eyewitnesses, started around 3 a.m. and burnt to ash. It's almost everything, including personal belongings. Let's go on to the phone lines and speak to correspondent Precious Semevo, who joins us now with details of this, uh, this particular story that he just brought and so, Precious, uh, good morning. Many thanks for your time. Tell us more about this fire. What do we know, for instance, to be the cause of it? Well, according to the municipal fire officer, Abdul Karim, uh, he told uh, me that they suspect, and uh, they were told when they arrived at the scene around 3 a.m., uh, that the fire might have started from uh, the, one of the houses, uh, which, you know, has uh, a shop bar or a local restaurant uh, in, and they suspect that, they may not have managed their fire situation. The previous that might have escalated into the destruction. Now, they are, you know, if you know the uh, situation in most of the zones that we have in our country, it is such uh, a packed, you know, community. Now you have buildings and then stores closely, you know, packed uh, together. Everybody trying to erect one structure or the other uh, nearby. And uh, when the fire started, it appears uh, it went through fast because according to the municipal fire officer, there were lots of uh, uh, things that could burn fast because of the, uh, the dry season that we are experiencing uh, in Ghana. Now, uh, apart from the things that got burned, uh, some mobile phone shops were also, you know, raised down. Uh, you have some boutiques and uh, some saloons with uh, almost everything inside burned down. Now, there is this. A uh, person who sells, uh, you know, foul around, also had, you know, her store also bent down. Now it got into the house and half of the entire was raised down, and uh, a portion of the mosque was also uh, affected. And the affected persons are uh, really. Uh, cannot control mm, uh, the, uh, indeed, the, indeed. Uh, based on what you say, the damage seems to be very extensive. Now, uh, w were there any casualties? No, as at now, okay. uh, the only thing that we, we know is that uh, one of the affected uh, customers, you know, fainted upon uh, when he was, he was called and uh, she was, uh, you know, rushed to the hospital for medical attention, but we understand that uh, she has been uh, discharged. Now, there are lots of them around here counting uh, their lost uh, property, and officials are also here uh, taking stock of uh, the damages. Okay, but as things stand now, uh, these officials who are there, I'm speaking of the uh, personnel from the fire service as well as the police, have not been able to come to a conclusion as to really what the cause of the fire was. No, they will only say that uh, they are still doing their investigation as it stands now. Uh, so they will be able to uh, confirm whether uh, the fire was caused as a result of a case. But uh, some eyewitnesses that are personally, you know, uh, they will not go on record though. Uh, but uh, they were saying that uh, they believe the fire started from the near house or one of the houses which has a shop bar. And uh, the fire out there uh, extended uh, to the other houses, bringing all the uh, the stores and part of the houses and then the, the mosque all going down. Right. Many thanks for that update. Precious Semevo uh, joining us from the Bruno Hafo region and the story he just brought is that... Uh, uh, fire has actually raised down several structures in Sunyani Zongo, including the mosque, actually. And uh, it does tell us that uh, the fire is out now, but uh, property destroyed runs into several thousands of Ghana cities. We'll bring you more subsequently. But time now for us to check out some information as relates to business after this break.